Hello everyone and welcome to my new computer system test in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we begin with the Monument Rocket which obviously would be a good thing to test on the new system to see how well it is performing. It is a 50,000 ton rocket originally designed to launch a fully fueled Saturn V into orbit so capacity 3,000 tons. And it does take a long time to get out to the pad, this special launch platform that I made for it, offshore platform. Uh, but it did launch faster than it ever has before. Uh, you can see it lifting off. Yes, it's still not real time. <laughs> this, is, this is serious stuff here. We've got boosters with each of those booster pods has four RD270 engines on it. Uh, for a total of 64 of those, and then the core has the equivalent of 41 M1 engines. So this rocket does use real engines, real-ish engines, they were developed. Um, they got to component testing and stuff like that, but I never launched, of course. Uh, so these are uh, cutting-edge engines, if you will. And this is how it rises with 101 equivalent engines. There's only nine actual engine parts. That was to cut down on the Monument Rocket's uh, lag. But in the previous system, which was an i7-4790K, running at 4 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and an RTX 2070 video card, it took 24 minutes to launch this to orbit. On this system, this is an i5-12600K, running at a maximum turbo of 4.9 gigahertz, uh, with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and still has the same RTX 2070 video card, because it is not a good idea to buy video cards these days. So I just carried the video card over into the new system, but it's still a very good video card. And uh, yes, this now takes 16 minutes to get to orbit. And as we see with booster separation, really, and that's not the CPU's fault, by the way. Uh, I mean, you think, oh, well, I mean, it's got uh, 12600K should outperform the i7-4790 more than that. You know, not 24 minutes to 16 minutes. But KSP is only using 14% of the CPU uh, it, because it doesn't use many threads. So that is a problem. If it could use more of the CPU for the physics and the plume rendering, for instance, especially the plume rendering, uh, then it would be able to perform much better, in fact, in real time. So, yeah. But as we uh, finished up the first stage, you saw it was already in green. It's already in real time. And with this upper stage with 13 M1 engine, or M1 engine equivalents, uh, 13 nozzles there, uh, it is basically in real time once the first stage gets out of render range. So, yep, uh, pretty good performance there. But yeah, it makes me a little bit sad that it doesn't really use all of the capabilities of the CPU. Of course, that does help as far as, well, I mean, I could still have it use about 50% and it'd still be all right for recording. So now OBS and KSP won't get in the way of each other or OBS and whatever other game I happen to play will not get in the way of each other. Now, recently I posted a video of this, the Starship Super Heavy Heavy, and or Heavy Squared, if you will. Uh, so this is this was not performing very well in the previous install, you may remember. Here it's much much smoother, uh, especially on liftoff. Now in the previous install, uh, when I tested it. It was after having left KSP on for a long period of time, and usually KSP does not like that. Uh, Kernel Space Program tends to have RAM leaks and stuff like that, and that causes problems. It pages out a lot of stuff to the system page file. Another difference between this system and the previous system is the previous system, the operating system, was on a regular hard drive, not an SSD. So this one, the operating system is on an M2 SSD. Uh, so. In fact, uh, NVMe, whatever, yes. So yes, that helps a little bit. Uh, so the page file is on that as well. I don't know if that's good for its longevity, but it is how it is for now. As we see booster separation, and with the Starship Super Heavy core itself, which is what we have here, it's they're just about real time here. In fact, I think it was only 1.2 seconds per second overall in the end. So pretty good launch time. The first stage of the Monument Rocket took about 7 minutes, so the first stage of the Monument Rocket was about 3 to 1 or something like that. Okay, and there is the Super Heavy out. I didn't reserve any fuel this time, we were just testing how long it took, so we just expended there. 
and this of course gets to orbit and totally in the green here so that's good mm, might mean that the KOS script would be better at landing it too because there's not as much physics lag last up we have the Saturn V rocket this is just the regular FASA version and you can see it's it's pretty much real time here and we are launching from pad 39b uh, with the Katniss Kick Canaveral mod uh, I didn't have all the structure there and also I time warped to morning so as a result we had fuel boil off because over here there isn't fuel replenishment so that causes the problem we won't be reaching orbit with enough fuel to get to the moon or anything like that but the idea is that well this is pretty much real time so we've got a lot of possibilities here so maybe for the mission profile series my my launch of this uh, for Apollo 11 will finally look proper somewhat. Uh, I, I could do some work on that and probably if I put the launch pad accoutrement on uh, they will lag it somewhat a little bit more but still it'll be a lot better than the early videos in the mission profile series. So yeah we had some boil off so there's leftover kerosene there and that threw me off a little bit. You can see this stage also has had boil off so there's not as much hydrogen as there ought to be. So yeah, I mean, that's basically the idea. Uh, look forward to much better videos uh, in the near future. And also the render time for the videos is sped up by a factor of two, basically. So that will improve video production as well. So here we go, moving from the second stage to third stage here. Of course, I do expect performance improvements in flight sim and star citizens and stuff like that as well. So that will be good it'll be easier to record those than it ever has been and we'll see what I do with that so here we are making orbit and with this making orbit I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time